Hey there, everybody. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, today we have got, I went ahead and pulled out the old Coleman Oak Point uh, big and tall sleeping bag to, uh, to talk about um, how do you, <laughs> how do you care for these bad boys? Because you, believe it or not, you don't want to just, sleeping bags are not just set up and forget it type of items. You don't just roll them up when you're done with them, throw them in a closet and forget about them. Because uh, they lose a lot of their quality. So we're going to talk about the proper care and uh, uh, for, a, for a sleeping bag. And we'll do that uh, right now. Hey there, everybody. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, so we're talking about the proper care and how to take care, how to wash your uh, your sleeping bag. Um, and not just wash, but also taking care. So let's start out. Just, uh, let's go from, from start to finish. All right. Okay, so you have um, gotten out to, your, to where you're gonna be camping. Um, You've undone, you've unrolled your, your sleeping bag, you've laid it out. Um, how do you, what, what do you need to know about taking care of a sleeping bag? Well, um, sleeping bags are fairly easy to take care of. They're fair, low maintenance in all reality. Uh, there's a couple times that you may have to actually wash it, and I'll talk about washing at the end of this video. Um, but, um, when you're out in the field, there's a couple things you might want to actually know and and do to to make sure that your sleeping bag keeps you properly insulated, especially if you're operating in a lower temperature zone. Um, so, like if you have a zero to uh, zero to forty or zero to thirty degree uh, sleeping bag, um, that I have, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is my Coleman Oak Point, uh, big and tall. It actually has a 30 to 50 degree range. So, if you want, to, uh, so if you're in an area, say I, there, there's a report that the may drip dip down into the 40s. Um, to, to ensure that the insulation in here insulates as, at the best that it can, um, a few things you want to do. Every morning when you wake up, you want to actually actually take the. Uh, Where'd it go? There it is. Take your zipper, unzip this bad boy all the way. Uh, if you happen to have a sleeping bag that doesn't have a, a zipper that opens all the way up, then you may have to go in, turn it inside out. All right, so go in there and you may have to wrestle around with it a little bit, you know, and get over here and grab the end and then <clears throat> turn your sleeping bag inside out. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because you, my fine watcher of, of good videos, <laughs> are a human being. Humans, whether we are uh, working hard or hardly working, we sweat, all right? When we're asleep, we sweat. Our body, our skin itself has to be Semi moist. No, uh, that's why when your hands and your and your and your lips get dry, they, they crack because they're not being they're not moistened. Uh, and when you sweat, you're not just letting out uh, salt water, uh, a combination of salt water and urea. You're actually also letting out a. Con uh, you've also got oils that help keep your skin soft, supple. So you, um, but you're going to sweat. Um, and when you sweat, you're, if you're, especially if you've got something like what I have, this you get beautiful, wonderful, uh, it's warm uh, flannel inner lining, uh, uh, inner shell of your lining of your of your sleeping bag. Um, if you, uh, when you sweat, your your body oils and all that are going to be are going to collect on the uh, uh, on the fabric. Even if you have a nylon inner liner, uh, your body oils and your sweat's going to collect. Uh, like down 
if you get it wet, down doesn't work. So if you don't let the, let the bag air out and dry out after each use, you're gonna add a little bit of moisture to a little bit of moisture. And as you sleep, especially if you're in a cold area, well, what are you gonna have, what happens to a side of glass tea, uh, glass iced tea when you are, uh, when you're, you know, you're setting over uh, in a humid area? Well, you got water that collects to the outside. It's not that the water's leaking through the glass, it's the water from the air is collecting. So you actually have condensation that also collects on the fibers and it decreases the, the, the insulation value. Um, even even synthetic fibers will lose some of that uh, some of that insulation quality if, when it gets wet. So if you so to ensure that you have a a good nice heated sleeping bag when you're, it's time to go to bed, turn it inside out and hang it up. Uh, take it from take it at the foot of the of the uh, sleeping bag and maybe want maybe you want to add some uh, some uh, binders to the uh, to, to something and um, to the uh, uh, to a branch or string up a, a clothesline or something and hang this up let it dry out um, and uh, and and to use it uh, and to uh, uh, let it ref let it freshen itself out air, air itself out and so that uh, it's ready to go in uh, on the following night um, if you're cooking, <laughs> one thing you want to know is if you happen to be cooking, don't you don't wear those same clothes to bed because one, when you cook, you get splattered with oil um, and uh, and everything else, and so you're cooking, and so you're transferring all that grease and oil that uh, is splashed upon you if you're frying something or even cooking hot dogs and things, little microfilm uh, uh, mist of. The juices that are evaporated come in contact with your with your shirt and skin. That's why you smell like hot dogs and smoke and stuff when you're fin when you're hanging around a campfire. Love the smell, but sleeping bags it collects on there, and so you start getting. And after years of buildup of spotty oils and skin flakes off and and sweat and 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 cooking oil and dirt for off you that's been stuck to your body because you didn't shower. Uh, for three days and all that stuff and it collects on there eventually you've got a bio sludge that is you're going to be sleeping on so it gets kind of gross so and, and after a while you know after uh, using it a whole if you use it a whole bunch then you may want to wash it and like I said you'll get to that later um, another thing you want to pay attention do is when you get out to locate uh, to the location that you're going to be camping Look and make sure that you're not laying your uh, your sleeping bag down on something gross. I was famous for having my sleeping bag make a cow pie out of nowhere. I could, me and my friends, we would go out in the middle of a cow pasture because, well, it went in the panhandle of Texas, that's all there are, <laughs> cow pastures and cow pastures and cow pastures and occasional field of corn and the occasional field of wheat and of, of Milo and and so and and the rare instance where some farmer decided he was going to grow some soybeans for whatever reason um, so we would go out onto uh, the cow pastures and we would go uh, we, that's where we'd go camping because well that's what we had and it was close by and it was fun because we would hang out and we'd be all scared to death because we'd be here and the coyotes around. But it would never fail. I would lay out my my sleeping bag. We're, well, we would look around and there is nothing on that ground until the following day whenever I was picking my sleeping bag up and poof, voila, out of nowhere there's a cow pie. Big old hairy turd just sitting there. Granted, now they were always dried up, but still, I was always sleeping on top of a cow pie. So. And now that you know that I used to sleep on poo, <laughs> that's one, one thing you want to do is make sure that uh, you're not doing something like that. Uh, you're not laying your your bag out on some bear scat or you know something like that. Um, when it comes to actually cooking and stuff, also don't go to bed in the same clothes that you cooked with. Not only because of the fact that you're going to transfer oils to there, if you're in some place where there's bears. You're going to smell what, like what a bear wants. Uh, bears have found out that people make some really good taste and grub. And so th when they smell that people have been cooking and they come around and all of a sudden they see, you know, 
there's a bag here. All of a sudden, they have got a, a burrito, a wrapped burrito of yumminess. And so they may not like the taste of people, but they think, uh, they're going to think, hey, this smells kind of tasty. So don't give a bears any reason to want to want to use you as a snack and, and turn you into the into a human burrito. Um, so make sure that you, if you do cook in uh, whatever clothes you're cooking in, after you're finished cooking and you've cleaned up, change clothes before you get to bed. Another thing you want to do with uh, when you uh, that actually will help keep your sleeping bag cleaner is get a uh, a sleeping bag liner. Now, in all pretense of purposes, this is nothing more than a sheet for your sleeping bag. Yes, it is. It's like putting sheets on uh, sheets on your mattress. Um, take it. Just take a sleeping bag. Uh, your uh, it's it's just a uh, it's a sleeping bag made. Uh, a lot of times it's made of t-shirt material, but there's other uh, there's other uh, materials that it can be made out of. Some that are even more insulating, uh, and others that just they just add just an extra layer so it, if you're going to be cold definitely throw on a sleeping bag liner because that's a that's another layer of of uh of air that is keeping you warm so you've got the outside air you've got your tent air which is going to be kind of cold you're having to work real hard to warm that up you have to use a tent heater uh and then you've got your sleeping bag which is you've got all these little spaces and in the, in the insulation to keep you warm but then on top of that it doesn't have to work so hard to keep you warm because you've got a sleeping bag liner that is laying right next to you that it keeps you even more warm so it's actually it does a good job and you can get them over walmart i saw them over walmart for like nine bucks i mean come on man it's a it's a great investment for something something like that it's uh very low uh low cost and has a lot of benefits because you're also taking all your all your sweat and oils and, and dirt and from the day of of uh playing out in the out in the lake and you're not transferring them to your sleeping bag you're transferring them over onto this sleeping bag line so do that try that out also i am I'm definitely uh am sold on sleeping bag liner i haven't bought one yet uh just saw one today as i was walking around walmart but i'm going to definitely be having some sleeping bag liners because pff, they, hey they're they're good so when you get uh so that's one of the best things to do is just hang your sleeping bag up every day, let it air out. Uh, don't you wear the same clothes as uh, to bed as you uh, as you have been working out in, uh, been hiking around in, exploring in. Make sure you have some sleeping clothes. Uh, if it's cold outside, yeah, it means you will be changing really freaking fast. But still, go ahead and and change clothes. Have some sleeping garments for uh, for bed and hiking garments for when you're out hiking or or uh, or tubing or whatever it is you happen to be doing all right so you've now made it home from a long camping trip um, and you've got your uh, your sleeping bag what do you do with this so you get home it's not dirty you haven't gone off you haven't set it in a cow patty uh, like I would always do what do you do well, first thing is you do not just leave it like this. Um, if you happen to have a down uh, sleeping bag that's got a, is got a, is, has a stuff bag in there and a compression uh, cap and all that, don't leave it. Don't ever leave your sleeping bag in a compressed state. This right here is actually a compressed state. I could actually even compress it down a lot more if I really wanted to try it. But um, never leave a sleeping bag in a compressed state. It's like a pillow. When you first get your pillow, you know, it's all big and fluffy and you know, it's, it's nice. You're sleeping in it. It's uh, it's the most, most wonderful pillow you ever laid your head on. But after a couple of years of your fat noggin pressing down on that, uh, on that pillow, eventually you've got kind of a worn area. Yeah. You may bring it up and you may fluff it out. Uh, you may even wash it and do what you're supposed to do by putting some, uh, putting some, some tennis balls or t old tennis shoes in there that have been washed. Um, to keep, you know, to, to bang up against the pillow. Eventually, though, your pillow's going to go flat because you have a big fat head that's lay, that's laying on the thing. You your you body hug it if you're like me, um, and eventually, all that, what happens is that fiber isn't quite as free and buoyant as it used to be. 
So what happens is it starts really kind of interlocking. Um, felt is a lot like this. If you ever seen felting, they take uh, fibers uh, like uh, like wool or uh, alpaca uh, wool or anything like that, and you pack it down, and it gets knotted up, and it. it it doesn't become as buoyant and fluffy as it is and that's what makes a sleeping bag as warm as it is is it's not just the type of material but it's also what's called loft um, and the more you compress that and you keep it compressed for long amounts of time the more that loft is going to break down uh, because the fibers are just uh, if you're using down there's actually little bitty parts of the uh, down that have got little solid uh, uh, fibers in there and those get broke every time you mash it so you're when you uh, if you if you're not allowing it to breathe again and uh, for everything to to come back to full bounce you're going to end up having a flat bag you're all you're going to do is you're going to end up having basically a, a nylon sheet a little bit of fluff in the middle and it's a nylon basically it's like nylon on nylon with nothing in the middle it's like a, a thousand a hundred year old quilt that has been used by family members for generations. Um, so when you get in, first thing you want to do is undo that puppy, unroll it, and if you're like this one, go ahead and unbuckle your, get it all completely un, undone, and if you happen to have a storage chest or a storage box, then you know. Just take your bed, get it all kind of fluffed up, and then just lightly fold it up and just put it in a box and let it sit like that. And actually, I wouldn't recommend draping uh, so much because your fiber will actually start hanging down and you'll end up getting a bald spot in the middle. So let's not hang. Go ahead and just fold it up. Doesn't have to be uh, uh, folded tight or anything. Just loosely folded and put inside of a, of a storage box. Uh, maybe if you happen to have a, a, a down uh, uh, sleeping bag, uh, an ultralight one of some sort, then definitely take it out of the compression bag and, and stuff bag and put it, get, just get a, uh, um, a pillowcase and take your stuff bag, throw it in the bottom of that pillowcase and then just take the sleeping bag and just, you know, just kind of lightly work it into the sleeping, into the pillowcase and then take that and just lay it on top of your of the rest of your stuff in your in your storage box or in, a, in the top of your closet or someplace like that that way it's loose it's not under strain of being of being mashed down it uh, you're giving it the chance to be able to breathe and to relax and to to come back to full buoyancy and it re, re fluff up on on the loft and so storage wise just let it let it all hang out <laughs> so um that's the best way you can actually take care of, of your sleeping bag from the from camp all the way to uh, to uh, to bring it home now the last thing is if you bring it home and it is dirty then you're, wa you're gonna want to wash it now a lot of times sleeping bags will have a tag and on there it will say keep this washing instructions which is mine is attached which is good so you follow the directions, um, only using oversized commercial loaders. So uh, if you happen to have a front loading washing machine, if you have a washing machine that has an agitator in it, don't put anything in, don't put a sleep bag in there or it will come out being shreds. I've done that twice in my life where I'd taken a sleeping bag and it would had become soiled uh, really badly and um, because well some of well, most of the time it was because well i was mad laid it on a cow pie but there's other times that other things that had happened where it would be just filthy and it needed to be washed um and so um stick it in the washing machine thing and all right well you put your sheets and everything else in there but since this is so large so bulky that agitator actually will grip the the shell and will just get to tearing and pushing and pulling and yeah and all of a sudden you pull it out and you've got rips all over your your shell so if you have an agitator a washing machine with an agitator in the middle take it to the take it to a, a laundromat and use a front loading washing machine or if you happen to have a top loading that doesn't have the agitator they do make those then use that 
uh, follow the directions, don't use an agitator, and then dry on low or air dry and just let it keep tumbling. And when you tumble, uh, best thing to also do is go ahead and stop by your local sporting goods store, any place that sells tennis balls, and grab two, three new, brand new tennis balls, use the, uh, uh, or use two and use the third one for the dog because he's gonna wanna know why you're using up all his toys when you should be letting him have them. So uh, don't, forget to, don't forget the dog just because you've got some tennis balls. But take uh, at least two, put them in the dryer, and just turn it on. It's gonna make some of the most god-awful racket. Um, you can also use, if you've got clean, old clean tennis shoes, do that too. They do offers the same thing. It's just this something that bounces around and just beats on beats on the on the the the, the fibers to keep them to bring them up in the loft. So uh, and we that was the old trick we used to use for for pillows was to use a use a uh, uh, tennis balls or tennis shoes uh, to beat up the pillow to keep it aloft. Because if you didn't, you know, wound up with this this lump, uh, misshapen lump that had all the fibers stuck in like the corners or you'd have this big old lump on one side and a little bitty lump on the other and nothing in the middle and it was, uh, you ruined your pillow. So you washed it and then you dried it with, with, uh, with uh, uh, tennis balls or tennis shoes um, and do the same thing with, with your sleeping bag. So there you go, proper care. From the field, back to the house back to storage uh the whole cycle of life so anyhow guys um is, this is uh, i'm getting excited it has been a nice day today um we're supposed to have some more nice days uh, who knows maybe camping is in the future so anyhow if i do i'm posting a video of it up uh, i'll be posting up a video right here about my adventures if i want if and when i do go get to go camping um so there you go take care and uh Thank you for watching, so click that sub button, subscribe, and if you really, really like it, then go ahead and hit that bell, so that way you're noticed. We're going to be throwing these videos up about once a week, every Friday, I'm around 9 o'clock in the morning. I, if, I've, if I have my way, we'll always be having at least one video coming up around that time. So, all right? So, thank you again, and uh, I'm going to go roll this puppy up, and uh, once more, just so that I can know that I've got a roll, uh, got the rolling down pat, and then I'm going to go ahead and tuck her away. I've got a storage box ready for uh, to accept a uh, accept a, uh, a big old lofty, big and tall Coleman uh, Coleman Oak Point uh, big and tall sleeping bag. All right, <laughs> I'm yabbering now. So anyhow, y'all take care. Thank you again.